2021 was the year of the retail investor. Stocks, or stonks as Reddit would say, only go up. A buy the dip mentality was ingrained in the minds of every retail investor. Cryptocurrencies, specifically dog coins, once again captured the public's imagination. Overall, exuberance. Retail investors certainly provided a lot of liquidity in the markets in 2021. The question is, did the big players, the insiders, sell into this liquidity? No, of course not. What a ridiculous question to ask. Okay, Zuckerberg sold Facebook stock nearly every weekday last year for around 11 months. Okay, Bezos sold, Musk sold, the CEO of Apple sold, the CEO of Microsoft sold. Okay, JP Morgan is sitting on a stockpile of cash waiting for higher interest rates. Okay, CEOs and insiders sold a record $69 billion of their stock. Okay, it is a Shemitah year, which some claim is bearish for asset performance. But that's just a coincidence anyway, and to be ignored. The stock market could hit a new all-time high in 2022. Generally, when there's a yield curve inversion, a stock market top follows and then a recession happens. Maybe we get a new high, or maybe a lower high, or maybe this time really is different, and the cycle is accelerated we see a recession happen fairly quickly. So usually, the yield curve inverts and a recession soon follows. Maybe this is why Eurodollar futures are now pricing in rate cuts by the Fed in 2023. Basically, is the market saying that the Fed are going to raise rates, quantitatively tighten, and cause a recession, and as a response to the recession, have to cut rates? Would a recession give Powell the impetus to start yet another round of quantitative easing? We'll have to wait and see. However, there is another interesting point of consideration. A potential black swan scenario that could have colossal implications for the financial system if it were to happen. It concerns a war game carried out on December 9th, 2021, just a few months ago. It was called Collective Strength. Now, Collective Strength was a war game that simulated a major cyber attack on the global financial system. Participants included treasury officials from Israel, the United States, the UK, the UAE, Austria, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands and Thailand, as well as representatives from the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and the Bank for International Settlements. The simulation featured several types of attacks that impacted global foreign exchange and bond markets, liquidity, integrity of data and transactions between importers and exporters. The participants were shown a film as part of the simulation. The narrator of the film in the simulation said governments were under pressure to clarify the impact of the attack, which was paralyzing the global financial system. The banks are appealing for emergency liquidity assistance in a multitude of currencies to put a halt to the chaos as counterparties withdraw their funds and limit access to liquidity leaving the banks in disarray and ruin, the narrator said. Participants discuss multilateral policies to respond to the crisis. By the way, multilateral does not mean a one-world government type thing, including a coordinated bank holiday, debt repayment grace periods, swap slash repo agreements, and coordinated delinking from major currencies. Interesting. Theoretically speaking, of course, would a false flag operation of this nature, a cyber attack on the financial system, allow a new financial system to emerge? And also disguise the collapse of the old economic system. But let's not mention that. And also pave the way for the mass adoption of central bank digital currency CBDCs, which could be introduced on maybe a temporary emergency basis. On the very same day as the collective strength war game, December 9th, 2021, a critical exploit against the Apache Log4j function, extensively used in many Java-based applications, was made public. Now, this could genuinely, unironically, be a coincidence and unrelated to whatever false flag operation may or may not happen in the near future. But the rhetoric and discussion around a comprehensive cyber attack is consistent. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack. We need to drive this point home repeatedly that Log4j is used just about anywhere that a Java applet could be running. Now, that includes 
massive distributed server applications like web hosts and database applications, but it also includes the silly little Java applet that you're running on your computer in order to connect to your legacy ERP system. It also includes potentially your timekeeping system. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. And so Lloyds of London has come out and said, we're not, we're not going to handle claims if a nation state has been involved. So there will be every attempt made to source nation state activity here. So yes, Gen 5 attacks are here. Cyber pandemic is around the corner and we must do everything we can to prevent that. We have to ask ourselves in such a situation, how could we let this happen? Despite the fact we had all the information about the possibility and the seriousness of a risk attack. Cyber pandemic is around the corner 